Earlier in the course, we looked at the um, example of a, a basic electrical circuit. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a step further and we're going to take a look at an LRC circuit and a second order differential and see how they're related. So what this does is it basically relates the inductance, the resistance, and the capacitance. And we can relate that to be able to find the voltage or the output of this um, sort of circuit. And just as a diagram of what the, one of these looks like, um, we have this induct or I'm sorry we have this um, inductor L and an inductor is like a coil or something like that and what that usually does is it either stores energy um, it can actually go through and change the rate at which the electrical charge is going through um, we have a resistor and we remember that a resistor from the first section of this it basically dictates the rate at which the flow goes through the electrical circuit and then we have this capacitance, and a capacitor essentially is going to be um, some sort of a measure that separates the electrical charge, and it could be stored per unit. So again, it stores energy in an electrical field, um, similar to one of these coils, um, but it, it does a little bit more um, for the circuit than just the coil. What the coil really measure uh, dictates the rate at which the um, inductance is going through there. So, um, given all that, we can use Kirchhoff's second law, and Kirchhoff's second law says that um, the inductance times the second derivative time plus the resistance times the first derivative plus 1 over the capacitance times Q is equal to the voltage E of T, and if we solve that, then we get some sort of measure of charge that's going to be measured in a unit called Coulombs. Right. And usually what we do is we use this relationship I of T, and you might remember I was relate, was the amount of charge that we found um, earlier in the course in amps. All right. So given all of this, we have a more complex circuit, all right? and we can clearly use our, um, our formula right here to be able to work on this to be able to find the charge in columns. So let's go ahead and look at an example. So we want to find the charging columns um, on a resistor of an LRC circuit at the time of 0.01 seconds. If the circuit has an inductance of 5 henrys, a resistance of 2 ohms, a capacitance of 0.01 farads, initial voltage of 0, and the initial conditions are 5 columns um, at steady state at 0 or at rest, and then the charge um, for the derivative is going to be 0 amps. All right, so. Um, here's how we can write the formula. We can just go ahead and write this as, I'm just going to use Q's. So Q double prime, and we have L plus R Q prime plus 1 over C Q is going to be equal to E of T. And so we know right away that L is going to be 0.05, because that's how many Henry's we have. We know that the resistance is 2 ohms, so R is going to be 2. The capacitance C is going to be 0.01. And E of T, um, it said, I believe the voltage was 0. So that's really nice because now we have a homogeneous type. And we have that Q at 0 is 5. And Q prime at 0, which is really I, is going to be equal to 0. All right, so those are all our conditions. So let's go ahead and put it into the um, circuit. So 0.05, or the circuit equation. So 0.05 Q double prime plus 2 Q prime plus 1 over 0.01 Q is going to be equal to 0. Right. And if we divide everything by 0.05, which is really the same thing as multiplying by 20, um, and then this is going to become 100. So we should end up with Q double prime plus 40Q, and that's going to be, I believe, 2,000. So that will be 100 times 20. It's going to be equal to 0. All right. We can get our characteristic equation, m squared plus 40m plus 2,000 is equal to zero. 
Um, I don't think that's very factorable. So let's just stick it into the quadratic formula. So negative 40 plus or minus the square root of 40 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2,000 divided by 2 times 1. And by the way, this is our values of m. And so that's going to be negative 40. This looks like it's going to be 1,600 minus 8,000, which is negative 6,400. Um, and the square root of negative 6,400 should be negative, or plus or minus, excuse me, um, 80i divided by 2. And so it looks like we have a case 3 where m is going to be negative 20 plus or minus 40i. All right. And so for the general solution, we can say that q at time t is going to be equal to e to the minus 20t c1 cos 40t c2 sine 40t. And then from there, we can just stick in the initial conditions. All right. And fortunately, this shouldn't be too bad for us because one of them was zero, which really helps out a lot. So we need to make some room here. All right, so our Q. Um, and we'll probably need Q prime before we do anything. So Q prime which unfortunately I believe is going to use a product rule. So Q, so I just lost that. So it's minus 20T, C1 cos 40T, plus C2 sine 40T. All right. And so if we want to find Q prime, unfortunately, that's going to be minus 20 e to the minus 20 t. And we keep the c1 cos 40 t. c2 sine 40 t. Right. Plus, we keep that negative 20, or I'm sorry, we keep the e to the 20, minus 20 t. And we're going to have minus 40 C1 sine 40T um, plus 40 cos. Uh, and we have it C2 in there. So 40C2 cos of 40T. Now this looks pretty horrific, but the good news is, remember, we're plugging in for zero and a lot of this stuff is going to simplify. So remember our two values we had, we had five and zero for the first, or for the original function, um, and then zero for the derivative. When we substitute zero back in, all the e's are going to cancel out. All the signs are going to cancel out. All right, so that's good. So 5, which is going to be equal to C1, because remember, cos just becomes 1. All right, so that's really nice. And then a little bit more rigorous, but not too awful, is we get negative 20 C1. All right, so we have negative 20, and then C1 of cos 40t, and then we have 40 C2. And fortunately for us, that works out really nicely. We just substitute in here. We add 100 to both sides. So 100 is going to be equal to 40 C2. Um, and then we divide by 40. Um, that should end up with 10 over 4 or 5 over 2 is equal to C2. All right, now, almost done. So we have Q at T 
is going to be equal to e to the minus 20t, we had that c1 was 5, cos of 40t, and then we have 5 halves, Um, of our sine of 40t. And I believe the question asks us initially to find what happens when t is equal to 0.01. So q at 0.01, I'm just going to go ahead and substitute in there, so bear with me while I do that. So I have to make sure it's in um, radian mode. So this is approximately um, 4.108, and that's going to be in coulombs. All right. Um, I'll check it again after I'm done just to make sure that's the correct value. All right, so hopefully this gives you a good overview as to how to utilize um, Kirchhoff's second law to be able to work with our LRC circuits.